In our fourth video on object-oriented programming, we take a look at the concept of polymorphism. Polymorphism literally means something that occurs in several different forms. It is derived from a Greek word meaning many forms. There are two main types of polymorphism in OOP, static and dynamic. You've probably been using aspects of polymorphism for some time without even realizing. Examine these two Python programs. What do they both output? Well, the plus symbol is clearly working in a different way depending on the contents of A and B. In the left program, the contents of A and B are recognized as strings. The plus acts as a string concatenation operator, joining the words hello and world together. In the right hand program, the contents of A and B are recognized as integers. The plus acts as the mathematical operator to add the numbers 10 and 20 together. This is an example of polymorphism in action. The plus symbol can take on different meanings depending on the context in which it is used. Static polymorphism allows you to implement multiple methods of the same name, but with different parameters within the same class. This process is known as method overloading. The parameter set must differ in at least one of three ways. One, they need to have a different number of parameters, e.g. one method accepts two parameters while another accepts three. The type of the parameters need to be different. One method accepts a string while the other accepts an integer. And they need to expect the parameters in a different order, e.g. one method accepts a string and then an integer, while another method accepts an integer and then a string. Overloading is not covered in the specification, so we won't go any further into that. Let's instead focus on the form of polymorphism you will see in the exams. Dynamic polymorphism. Within an inheritance hierarchy, a subclass can override a method of its superclass. This allows the code of the subclass to customize or completely replace the behavior of that method. To find out more about this process, watch part two on our OOP series. Now what we're seeing here is a form of polymorphism. Both methods share the same name and parameters, but they provide different functionality depending on whether they're implemented by the superclass or the subclass. So here we have a very simple class for a generic bird. It has one method, make sound, and the bird makes a chirp sound. We've created another, more specific class called duck, which inherits from the bird class. We provide the duck class with a more specific version of the make sound method, quack. We do the same thing twice more to create a crow and a canary subclass. The crow goes squawk and the canary goes tweet. Let's imagine we now instantiate or create one of each bird, duck, crow and canary object and place them into an array called bird array. What would be the output from the loop shown here? So four counter equals zero to three, so that's going to go through each element of the array print bird array counter dot make sound. Depending on the type of animal, object, make sound does something different. It outputs chirp, quack, squawk, tweet. Polymorphism means giving an action one name like make sound that is shared up and down an object hierarchy, with each object in the hierarchy implementing the action in a way appropriate to itself. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is polymorphism and how can it be used?